Hello and welcome back. We're going to take a look at the activity surrounding um, stacking images today. We're going to be taking a look at how it's done. Uh, MaximDL allows us many different methods of, of stacking images. Today we're just going to look at stacking monochrome images and we will be getting into color stacking a little bit later, uh, maybe a couple videos away from here. Uh, stacking is usually done to improve a signal to noise ratio. Uh, so maybe you've taken a bunch of five minute integrations of a very faint object and in a, any given single five minute integration the signal to noise ratio is very low. You may have uh, nebulosity or images of a galaxy that are kind of riding just above or at the noise floor of the imagery. Um, hopefully above. <laughs> and then uh, stacking images allows you to increase that signal while uh, keeping the noise floor very low through the process of utilizing darks, biases, and flat field frames. So let's take a look at a couple of those methods. Uh, one of the methods uh, utilizes MaximDL in a very memory intensive manner and that is to open all the images first. So let's go take a look at images. You guys are getting really familiar with the Pelican Nebula. So let's open all the images we have of, of our hydrogen alpha version of the Pelican Nebula. There are 18 of them. So it's going to open all 18 images, none of which have been processed yet. And as you can tell at 12 megabytes each, this is certainly going to be eating up quite a bit of memory and processor time. So um, be mindful that if you're opening up many images, uh, you could slow your computer down to a crawl. And go over to the process and set calibration screen and make sure that we have all of the correct uh, process frames, bias dark and flat fields for hydrogen alpha are there. At this time, I like to calibrate all. You can do it later, but I like to do it now. And then I would typically go through each and every image and make sure that the images are clean, if there's nothing in here that could contribute to the noise, maybe a, a meteor strike, uh, you know, cosmic ray hits on the CCD, maybe an airplane going by, maybe a, a cloud had entered the field and had blown by uh, during your imaging session. So you certainly don't want to be adding those into a, a, an image stack. At this point we took a look at the process menu and there is a, an item here with a plus sign called stack. Now normally this also appears up here on your toolbar but I've, I've taken it off. I like a very clean toolbar. I like using menus. If you click on the stack item here in version 6 of MaximDL you're presented with a nice dialog box with, with nothing listed here in the stack area and then a whole bunch of options over here which is kind of neat. When you're trying to uh, stack everything of a given filter uh, make sure that uh, classified by filter is checked and that by object is checked because it will actually be able to go out and determine um, whether you're stacking objects, different objects like, I don't know, M31 versus M13. It'll go out there and stack them accordingly and not make a mess of it. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, I'm also going to leave auto calibrate off. We've already calibrated our images. If you trust MaximDL and all the images to look great, go ahead and click Auto Calibrate and it will do a great job of it. At this point, we're going to add images. That refers to images that are already open on the system. And then we're going to say Add All to our list and say OK. And then it gives you a warning. It says, hey, you're stacking up to 18 images here depending on exclusions. Consider using Add Files instead. Adding files saves memory by automatically opening each image only as it is needed and it doesn't open them all into your active read-only memory, re I'm sorry, your RAM, your random access memory. Um, and then it will give you all the options you, you normally expect like auto calibration and color conversion and everything. Um, so it's asking, do I really want to be so memory intensive? And I'm going to say yes, I'm, I'm wanting to be memory intensive. Now let's take a look at it. It creates this thing called the group, group number one no object specified because it only doesn't care. And all of these are our hydrogen alpha five minute integrations of the Pelican Nebula. Tabbing over 
um, you have the ability to limit it by full with half maximum values, roundness, i.e. if the stars aren't tracked right, you can kick them out, excluding images of below a certain intensity and with minimum contrast, maybe clouds it. Aligning, I like to do automatic star matching. If you have stars in your image, automatic star matching works really well in MaximDL, but you can do autocorrelation, which looks at shapes of things like Jupiter or something like planets, the moon. You can use manual one star or manual two stars, which will also include the ability to rotate automatically. It'll do an astrometric um, matching alignment between images, planetary, uh, automatic with one star, and it'll just overlay all the images uh, as, as necessary. I like to use auto star matching. It gives a really good representation. There's no color on this image. They're all one. And then for combine, you have your option of combine methods of some average, median, sigma clip, SD mask, and drizzle. Uh, here we want to in increase our signal to noise as much as possible. I will be using some. Average is really good if you'd like to increase signal to noise, but also get rid of speckly stuff like the occasional, uh, occasional micrometeor or something that's flying by uh, through your image. Uh, it'll also get rid of cosmic ray strikes on the CCD chip. I like to keep the IEEE floating. That way you're not clipping and limiting it to 16-bit integers because some of these images might actually exceed your typical 16 bits. Um, 655.35 might go higher than that. And then uh, there are lots of other options. I'd like to combine it to a new image that's open, not to a folder. And uh, we're going to ignore the whole thing about color because we're not dealing with color right now. And I'm just going to say go. And what it's doing now is it's automatically aligning each of the images based on the star's positions, their centroids, overlaying them, adding them together pixel by pixel. And then it results in a final image, which is just called a pure group one, named after the group that you've done here. And if you're happy, you just say close. So let's take a look at this in a little bit of detail. If we bring this up a little bit, you'll see that indeed the image is considerably brighter than it was. It's also a lot smoother. Uh, if we bring up the information window, so you can see some of the uh, some information here that'll help you determine the, um, the signal to noise values. If we if we bring up uh, not region, but if we bring up the area information. You can look at uh, the total values here, just kind of get a feel for what's happening with the maximum. And you see we've gone pretty high over the maximum. The minimum values are pretty low. The average is 2771 for pixel values. And that, that's pretty cool. Let's go to go to aperture now. And I want you to pay attention to this this little thing over here called signal to noise, which is our signal to noise ratio. And we're looking at uh, the values here, the values are pretty low. You, I can get 29, 30, lots of zeros hanging out, which is kind of nice. I'm looking at stars, you get some bizarre signal to noise ratio with stars that happen to be blooming. But if we look at your uh, other typical star, signal to noise is uh, very good at 542, very strong signal. Uh, 15,000, that's a very strong signal. Going to some of the fainter stars, signal to noise is considerably lower. But if we look at, uh, let's pick one object that we that we can identify easily. Let's look at these stars here. They make two and two. Let's look at this star here, which is like in the pelican's beak. Putting our mouse over it, got a signal to noise ratio of 542.9. Okay. Going uh, to an image that doesn't have that has not been stacked, you can see that the signal to noise ratio here is only 387. So we've added a, about 200 um, more pixel values to that star's signal to noise ratio, which is really something to speak about. And if you make this bright, this is a single five minute integration. Look how grainy the image is. Okay, look, just look at the general quality of the nebulosity. Going back to the group one image, look how smooth it has become. That's because you've increased the signal-to-noise ratio of the nebulosity as well. This is a, quite a primo image. If you look at the edge, you'll see there's some dark 
areas here on the edge, like a dark vertical stripe, and that's because the image had its stars aligned um, between every five minute integration. The guide chip was switched off during download and the telescope slewed a little bit and wasn't tracking perfectly on a given star. So um, each image is slightly translated a little bit because of tracking errors between images. But MaximDL handles that for you, which is pretty good. So they're stacking in one method. If we close them all, and I'm going to say no, don't save anything, closed everything, you can still do a process and stack. Here's the second method. First of all, let's delete that. We have nothing in our stack menu right now. It's smart. It knows that you can't add images. That's grayed out. But you certainly can add files. And you can select the same files that we had before, all the H alpha files, all 18 of them. And it loads them up. This time it's <laughs> renumbered as group 2. I want to say auto calibrate. Uh, the auto calibrate checkbox applies only when entries are added. To change this option for an existing group, right click on it and toggle the auto calibrate menu item. So we can sit here on this and check auto calibrate. And now auto calibrate is on for that group. Uh, we don't care about quality. We care about alignment. We want it to be auto star matching. We don't care about color. And we do care that it be sum and IEEE float. And at this point, we can click go. And now it's using a lot less memory. And it goes pretty quickly, actually, as it opens each image, calibrates it and then stacks it, and then you're done. And considerably faster than the other method, but you don't see what's going on behind the scenes so much, and it doesn't allow you to check on the images individually. But the result, not surprisingly, is the same, um, that your image here looks, looks pretty good. It's a pretty impressive image set, and Maxim Deal does a great job with stacking. So if you're looking to create a uh, a higher signal to noise ratio image this is the way to do it thanks for watching